5.1 Your basic home theater setup. The 5 in 5.1 means there are 5 satellite speakers that are at or near ear level. These satellite speakers consist of a left front, center, right front, surround left, and surround right. The point 1 means there is one subwoofer. So how do you get audio from your TV to these speakers? In this video we'll go over your basic wired scenario, where your satellite speakers are passive, meaning they don't actually produce any power themselves. So the audio signal needs to be powered and amplified by an audio video receiver, which is then connected to the speakers via speaker wire. Regardless of which receiver you own, these next basic steps are universally the same. If you have wire cutters, I would suggest grabbing a pair of those. Otherwise, you could delicately use a pair of scissors. One. Decide where you want to put your speakers. The front left and right speakers typically flank the TV, and you can make your front soundstage as narrow or as wide as you want. And depending on the type of speakers, you could set them on the ground, place them on top of speaker stands, or mount them to the wall. The center speaker can go on a speaker stand under the TV, on a TV stand, or mounted above or below the TV. The surrounds typically go to the sides of the main listening position or even slightly behind and to the sides. Again, either on speaker stands or mounted to a wall. As far as subwoofer placement goes, you'll most find them between the center speaker and the front speaker, either the left side or the right side. Sometimes you'll find them in the corners of the room, because if it's close to a wall then it'll probably resonate against the wall and make it even boomier. Or you might find it on the side. Whatever the case may be, subwoofer placement isn't as crucial because it's more of just how you feel it. So it's definitely something you want to test out, putting it in various positions around the room. Two. Determine the lengths of each speaker wire needed. My personal situation is quite unique since I'm dealing with a media closet. So I had to account for wire going up into the attic, over to where the speaker is located, then back down the wall. That is why my satellite speakers are mounted, in order to hide as much of the wire as possible. After determining the lengths, I like to plug the speaker wire into the speakers first. So, let's carefully remove about 1.5 to 2 inches of the outer sheathing, or about 4 to 5 centimeters for my metric friends out there. In my case, you can see a red and black wire within. This color system is universal in home theater, red being positive and black being negative since you need a positive and negative charge in order to oscillate the speaker driver back and forth. You might have speaker wire that's covered in clear sheathing. In this case, usually the side with writing on it is the positive wire. But honestly, it makes no difference which wire you plug into the terminals on one end, just as long as you plug it in the same exact way on the other end. For example, I could plug the red wire into the black terminal and the black wire into the red terminal which is fine so long as I do the same exact sequence when plugging the wires into the receiver. But why would you want to do that? I don't know. Okay, back to the speaker. Carefully remove about a half inch or 1.5 centimeters of the sheathing from each red and black speaker wire. To help the bare wire go into the terminal better, go ahead and twist the ends. Even then, it might take a few tries to get it into the terminal nicely. Because you don't want it to be frayed and bunched up with the individual wires going every which way, as you can see on these clips satellites, there is a mechanism where I just have to push the terminal in, called a spring clip, which creates a hole for these wires to go into. Once it's in place, I just release my thumb, which clamps the terminal back onto the wire, holding it snugly in place. Once the wires are in, set it on a speaker stand or mount it, and you're golden! Now repeat that step for all your remaining satellites. Three. Let's focus on the back of the receiver. In this demonstration, I'm using the Sony STR-DH550, which was the receiver we hooked up when we first moved into this house in 2017. Again, this will basically be the same with whatever receiver you end up purchasing. These are your speaker wire terminals here. This particular style of terminal is called a binding post, which can accept banana plugs or bare wire. <laughs> no, not that kind of bare wire. Yes, that kind of bare wire. T-shirt now available in my merch store. No, seriously. Link in description. At this point, it'd be a good idea to strip the sheathing from the ends of all the speaker wires going into the receiver. So then they'll all just be ready to go one by one. We're gonna go left to right, which begins with the surround right channel. When looking at the TV, this is the speaker that will be behind and to the right. Unscrew the red terminal to open up the hole that will accept the bare wire. Twist that wire real good and stick it in the hole. 
Again, since it is at an awkward angle and the binding posts are rather close together, it may take a few tries to get it in without bunching up or fraying, since you're essentially wrapping the wire around the binding post. I wish there was a foolproof way to do this, but there isn't. Maybe inserting from the top would be easier in your case, so try that as well. Otherwise, you might want to invest in some banana clips to make this process easier. Once it's in, screw the red binding post until it is fairly tight, but no need to go crazy tight. Do the same for the black wire. And then, repeat the steps four more times for your left surround, center, right front, and left front speakers. Four. With most AV receivers, a subwoofer will connect via RCA cable. There are subwoofer cables out there, but your standard RCA cable will work just fine too if you happen to already have one lying around the house. With the Sony STR-DH550, you can see a little section labeled subwoofer out with two ports, since it can send signal to two subwoofers at once. But since we're dealing with just one subwoofer, you can plug one end of the RCA cable into either of the subwoofer ports, and plug the other end into the subwoofer. In this case, with the Clips Reference Theater Pack sub, it has RCA inputs, but as you can see, one is labeled LFE. We want to plug the RCA cable into that since we want all the low frequency information to be fed through the subwoofer. If your subwoofer doesn't actually say LFE, it's typical practice to plug into the white port, which usually is associated with a mono signal. Note. This Klipsch subwoofer is also wireless, so just as a bonus, I'll go over that too for those who have this subwoofer or something similar. The reference theater pack itself comes with this wireless okay. transmitter, so instead, plug it into one of the subwoofer ports of the receiver, plug in the provided USB power cable into the transmitter, and plug the other end into an outlet. When the subwoofer is turned on, since it is pre-paired by clips to the transmitter, it should sync automatically. There is this sync button here on the transmitter if you need to troubleshoot, but so far whenever I've messed around with this transmitter, it just works no problem. Five. You have two options at this point. One, plug all your stuff into these HDMI ports here, like your Blu-ray player, streaming device, gaming console, etc. Then connect to your TV by plugging one end of an HDMI cable into this HDMI out port and plugging the other end into an HDMI port on your TV. Most receivers nowadays allow 4K video signals to pass through without degradation, maybe even Dolby Vision or other HDR formats, so it's usually fine to go with this setup. But your second option is to have all your components plugged into your TV and then use ARC to send all your TV audio out to the receiver and then out to your surround sound speakers. This option only works if both your receiver and TV support ARC or eARC. And most importantly, that the cable connected to your HDMI out port on the receiver connects to the TV input labeled ARC. Otherwise, it won't work. So that way you not only hear all your connected components in surround sound, but even TV audio, like if you access your streaming apps through your smart TV. And that's your basic setup, folks. Enjoy movies and TV shows in 5.1 surround sound. One last thing I would suggest is to tune your speakers. A lot of receivers these days come with some sort of room calibration software built in. It might come with this basic, basic microphone that you plug into it. It'll play test tones through each speaker and measure how far you sit from each speaker, etc. Otherwise, just use those ears. Any receiver will give you the option of manually adjusting the level of each speaker. Get in there, test the levels, make adjustments, because ultimately, you are in control. Make your home theater sound the way you want it to sound. Determine the lengths of each to help the bear wire bear wire twist that wire we're we're good so that way you not only hear all your connected connected so there you have it folks I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, definitely hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already and hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video like this one. And of course, always be listening.